today I was uh, I was just sort of praying about all this, and as I was studying it, I didn't like it. Um, with the direction that I think I want to go, I, I want to shift it up. So for the next three weeks after this, I'm going to teach um, uh, how do you make history. How do you make history? I gotta wait till you go up well, until I get on, right? You're on. Okay. <laughs> is um, I think one of the most important things to do is is how do you make history? I think a lot of us, when we think of that, we take it to an extreme. Like, like Deb, you're not an extrovert by any stretch of the imagination. So you're not when you hear that, that just doesn't really fit. But if I change it, is how do you make a legacy? A legacy. How do you make a legacy, Roddy, that that changes the way your past is viewed. And I felt like I wanted to teach that for the next four weeks because every one of us in this room have a past. All of us. There's not a person that doesn't. And we feel like our legacy is, is tainted by the past. Like whatever your window is, you feel that has tainted your legacy. And I want to show you scripture tonight on how God's going to walk you through that so that you're not saying... Uh, you know, but in 1997, I did. You're not going to reflect on 1997. You're not going to reflect on 2015, I did. You're not going to reflect on, you know what I mean? You're going to know that those moments of weakness became the greatest moment of your strength. And that's where I really want to shift us to. Is that fair? So that's really what I want to teach tonight. So, Ronnie, why don't you lead us in prayer, and then let's get into this. Father, well, thank you for the time that we can have tonight spend together with each other spend this time in your word we know there's a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us to be here god we thank you for the anointing of the holy spirit that will teach and guide us tonight lord we just pray that our hearts will be touched by the message guide joel as he, as he teaches us and what we learn and we spread it to others we pray in jesus name amen. Amen. amen amen so uh thanks for those that are watching online if you were expecting better life part six uh, you got the notes downloaded, but you can write on the back of them what I'm going to teach. So stay with me for the next, uh, the balance of January. We're going to be doing this, and uh, we're going to learn how to make a legacy in spite of our past. And that's real talk. You know what I mean? That's real talk. Because you hear people say, uh, you, you, you're leaving a legacy, and you're thinking, well, who's perfect, right? Uh, and I want to think, what what can we really do? So uh, I want someone to... Turn in their Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 5. And here's the first thing I want you to write down is the word shift. Shift. A shift is going to happen. And when I think of a shift, I think of something moving direction. Okay? So tonight you're going to learn how to start moving direction. All right? Changing their direction. So who's got 2 Corinthians 10, uh, 3 to 5? Right, go for it. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Wow. Let's go over this verse one more time. Read it real slow. I may interrupt you. We are human. Wait. What does it say? We're human. We're human. So when you're religious, you are told you're not really human, you're religious. And religious people live at a different level in their mind. You're human. Will you fail? Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes, you will. Will people around you fail? Yes, they will. Okay, let's keep going. But we don't wage war as humans do. Stop. You know what that means? There is a spiritual battle that goes on that's different than a physical battle. Okay? Uh, some of you had a significant spiritual battle over the Christmas holidays. Flat out. That's just what happens. Spiritual battles that get you off course because we, when we wage the war, we try to wage it as a human rather than the spiritual. Are you with me so far? Like, like James, the battles you face, I face, can't just be handed 
in the physical, they have to be given to God, let God do his business. Because do we believe that God is greater than the natural? Mm -hmm. At some point, you have to come to that place and say, in spite of everything going on around me, God is greater than any natural. Are you with me so far? So the battle of your past is, is, is under attack, right? But you're not waging a war against it by natural means. You're waging war against it by spiritual means. Are, are you with me so far? Okay. Just flip your notes over, Robert. I'm going to do something different. You'll love it. What, flip my notes? Yeah. What, I'm doing that? No. You, I knew what you needed tonight, so you came in. I just changed. So you're going points. off schedule. Yeah, that's yeah. weird. Just for you. Just for you. <laughs> so, so let's start at the verse again, just so Robert gets it. Here we go. Second Corinthians ten three to five. Start it again, Brett. We are human. What are we? Human. human. We're human. Okay, let's keep going. But we don't wage war as humans do. Got it. Mm -hmm. So there's a spiritual battle. Let's keep going. We use God's mighty weapons. Okay, and what are God's mighty weapons? What are God's mighty weapons? Love. Love. Excellent. What else? That's a really good one. Because when you think of God's mighty weapons, the first thing you think of is you go into some uh, spiritual thought that, that's hyper faith, right? Because you would think of God's mighty weapon as this. But God's greatest weapon was love. And that was just obvious. Right? What else? What's another one of God's mighty weapons? Hope. Hope. What else? Faith. Faith. What else? His word. His word. The Bible said to be a sword. What else? How about prayer? Prayer is probably the most uh, commonly used last resort. Last resort. Not the first resort. Last resort. What I'm going to do is starting, uh, and I'm going to announce it this Sunday. Is I'm going to invite people to go on a 21 day fast with me. It doesn't mean food necessarily. It could be something you choose to fast for 21 days. And we're going to take time every day where you take a moment to pray every day. And I'll guarantee you at the end of 21 days, your life will be different. It will. Because you're giving something up to get closer to God. And I don't know what that is. You give up. You know what I mean? But something you're giving up for 21 days that you're going to say, I'm not going to do this for 21 days. Just the 21 days. You know what I mean? I'm not asking anybody to go 21 days straight with no food. I, I'm just saying, let's be smart what we do. But for the 21 days, uh, and it's going to start Monday, basically, that, that's what we're going to go for. And let's see what, what takes place as a result of it. Uh, and that's what I'm really looking forward to. You know what I mean? But the other thing is the daily prayer. Don't give up pizza. Don't give up pizza, no. <laughs> That'll be your only thing you can't give up. Let's go. Let's keep going on the verse. Not worldly weapons to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and stop. How many, when you get into a struggle, you're dealing with your past, how many deal with it with reason? Right? Yeah. You deal with it with reason. You look at it and you try to reason it out. How's that work for you? I think it's called circle. You end up in this circle, right? Like, and you don't get it. How many have ever had conflict with someone else that doesn't make sense? Uh, everybody's hands up. That is like trying to bring reason to your crisis. Won't work. That's like trying to bring reasoning to your failure. It won't work. What was meant for evil, God is making for good. Doesn't make sense. How can at your lowest time spiritually, God put right people in your path and love you back onto the right path. That doesn't make sense. That should be the time, according to religion, that you get beat down. Right? But this is different. Keep going, Brett. And to destroy false arguments. Again, you're human. You battle false arguments every day. How many of us in this room agree that we've been told how bad we are and don't see the good? All of us. And so the biggest battle you have is with who? Yourself. So if you can beat self, you win. So how do you beat self? I acknowledge I'm human, but I also acknowledge I'm in a spiritual war, and my battle will not be done with these hands. They'll be done with his hands because I'm asking him to come down and do my work. Doesn't mean I lay there. It means that it's his hands are on mine. You know what I mean? 
That's how I think about it. Like when you're doing your 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 gift, where you're doing that, oh man, that take the devil out of people thing. <laughs> where you're doing that acting pressure and you're working that and you're you're doing that, you believe God's hands are on yours. That's powerful. And I wonder if we would start thinking that way when we love people, that when we touch people, we touch each other, we're touching with the love of God. I wonder what would change. Thank you, thank you. Last part of the verse, Brad. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts. Okay, stop there. We're talking about living a legacy and leaving a legacy in spite of our past. Arguments come to prevent you from moving forward. Yes or no? Then rebellion comes to get in your brain, and then it, it, you get into this whole thing, but you got to keep moving forward. Correct? So the first step in moving from the failures to a legacy mindset is you have to understand the battle you're in based on 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. You guys with me? So that's your first point, Okay. Let's go to the second point that I want you to read is, is this is a very simple passage. It's in 2 Corinthians, again, chapter 5, verse 17. But if anybody's got the message, uh, I want you to go to the message translation. Go to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter five, uh, 5, verses 14 to 17. Basically, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, I am a new what? I'm a new creation. So up above, it talks about you're born human, right? That's who you are. You're human. Not only are you born human, you are human. You got me so far? So how many how many know exactly what I've said so far? You got me. Okay. Now let's go to the second part. You're a new creation. But check out the message translation. Go for it, Brad. All right. I'm trying to see where verse 17 is, but... <laughs> Because they, they don't break it that way. Actually, it's in your notes, I think. The other notes. Okay. We looked at the Messiah in that way once and got it all wrong, as you know. We certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside, and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, is created new. The old life is gone, a new life burgeons. Look at it. All this comes from the God who settled the relationship between us and him, then called us to settle our relationships with each other. God put the world square with himself through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling everyone what he is doing. We're Christ's representatives. We God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between us. We're speaking for Christ himself now. Become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. There you go. You guys get that? That's a whole different perspective on 2 Corinthians 5.17. It? it basically says because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. How different is that than society, right? We looked at the Messiah that way once and got it all wrong. <clears throat> so, as you know, we certainly don't look at him that way anymore. We look inside, and what we see that anyone united with Messiah gets a fresh start. That's pretty cool. But that's hard. See, many of us can forgive each Others, but we can't forgive ourselves. I could make a horrific decision. Robbie will be the first to love me. Say, it's all right. I'm praying for you. But the same token, same for you, Robert, is you'd love to go, hey, I've got this. Because we don't know how to, obviously, make those decisions on how to live like we're new. So, the second point is I want you to understand is you're new. And I believe you're constantly being renewed. You got me? I believe you're constantly being renewed. Every minute you're being renewed. Every opportunity uh, you are being renewed. 
there's things that are going on that, that in your world around you that you need to find a way to find strength because you're being made new. New Year's, everybody has resolutions. They're going to lose this weight, that weight. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. God the wants them together. God. They, they, <laughs> they, they, they bought the gym membership for three years and they've gone for the second day. But the reality is, it said he made me new. So does that mean he made me new? But then what happens is we go have to go back to 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. He made me new, but I have a gravitational pull back my human nature. Okay? And yet I'm saying the legacy I have is not defined by my past, but can be defined by my future. Right? So, does that sound good so far? It sounds practical, doesn't it? Okay, now let me throw you a curve. But life in Christ is constantly moving. Life is always moving. Can you control life? When Joseph, remember the story in Genesis? When Joseph had the beautiful coat given by the dad, the most beautiful coat. Did Joseph get up on the morning he was thrown into the pit, or in one translation it says cistern? Did he wake up prepared for that? So he didn't, he didn't go to bed the night before and wake up out here the next morning and go, today my, my brothers will betray me and throw me in the well. I'm ready. Okay. Did that happen? No. Nope. Nope. No. Life is constantly moving. And the plan is to take you back to your failure rather than your future. You with me? So what happened was, the lesson you have to learn, and write this down, God is in the middle of good and bad days. See, it's easy for me to say God's in the middle of good days. But is God in the middle of bad days? Sure. Okay. You say, sure, but we are driving and we're thinking, where are you? You'll hear you say, what are you doing? Why aren't you answering? Well, when it's going good, you're not wondering where he is. But when it's bad, we go to the human side and think, where are you? So if you learn, like, so you're the most positive person in the room. So you're looking at me like, this is like Greek. Well, that, that doesn't exist. 90% <laughs> of people that aren't energetic and positive look at me going, this makes sense. Because I do this, and I don't like it. So how do you shift it? This is what I want you to understand. God in the, is in the middle of your good and bad days. So let me ask you this. When you get stuck in that pit, we've all been there. Even if we're positive, we still have pit days. And, and, and the unique part of the pit was when he got thrown into that pit, it was waterless. It was dark. It stunk. And you were alone. When you go to the place that's waterless, that's because there's a lack of resource. Right? When you have a lack of resource, you tend to get stuck because your limitations are magnified. When you go to the darkness, it's hard to move because you don't know where to go. I was talking to a, a young man yesterday who serves in the Navy and he was telling me about his bunk on the ship. Oh my God. I would have complete claustrophobia meltdown. I wouldn't even sleep. I'd stay standing the whole time. He said, you can't even lay on your side. He said to me, he says, your shoulders are too wide. You couldn't lie on your side because you'd be hitting the bunk above you. I'd be like, oh, my God. I said, how do you do it? Anybody ever go into a cave, an actual cave? Light ever go out? And you're like, oh, boy. That's a scary place when it's so dark. Yeah. It's scary. And there's been times in my life when things have been so dark around me, I didn't know where to step next. But if I depended on my human nature, 
I would normally step in the wrong direction. But if I would trust the word to be the light, I would step in the right direction. Got me? The other thing is this. How many know failure just stinks? It stinks. Like, I mean, it. everywhere you turn, it's just worse. But God's saying, I set you free. So when you get thrown back into that pit, it's trying to maximize what you used to be instead of speaking life to who you are. See, here's what comes out of this. I'm being real focused, and I'm going to break this down the whole month. Okay? What happens when people go through a pit experience? I'm going to list some words. I'm going to ask you to list some words. When you get taken humans, what are words that fly out of our mind? In the pit, right? You're in the pit. You get in the pit. You got the news of what you're battling. That was a pit day. That was a pit day for both of you. And you either choose to make that your address or you choose not to. Are you with me so far? Okay. How about the word like abandonment? Abandonment. A lot of people feel abandoned. How about betrayal? Because sometimes you go in your head, it's not your choice. Someone else tries to throw you in. See, we live in a society where people like to catch you in something. So I say, see? See? Because if I can remind you of that, even if I... I don't want to live like that. How about a false accusation? Anybody ever had one of those babies? <laughs> Yikes! My dad taught me if a false accusation comes, don't defend it because you're defending your guilty. People that know you really know who you are and don't lie. And if you have to sell yourself on who you are, forget it. Because no. now you're trying too hard to convince me. Everybody in the room has a past, but I don't want to deal with your past. I want to deal with your future. Shut up. <laughs> Sorry, those on TV, that was not a person, that was a dog. <laughs> not that correct. How about the second one? Imprisoned. Imprisoned. You want all this hope, but your past is taking away your hope. And you're maximizing your humanness rather than maximizing the faith. I think the worst place to ever be. Today I just did a got 90, and uh, I talked about being behind the bars. There's something behind the bars that we protect and try to cover up. Because if I can manage my pain, I can handle it. But if I have to let my pain out, see, you got to remember, out of your greatest pain will come your greatest joy. Out of your greatest breakdown will come your greatest strength. Out of what appears to be your greatest weakness, strength is going to emerge. I'm telling you firsthand. Tonight, I, had, I, 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 I was not prepared for all this grief stuff and this journey of stuff. There's, as much as I thought I did okay, I do okay sometimes. And today, I was I was walking by the Grove and walked all the way down by Cafe Allegra, and, and I, I missed my walk with my wife because this is where we started when there wasn't a reliance. By walking by it. And so I walked thinking, man, I missed her. And I remember, I'm getting, I went back, and James, I went back to the moment. I remember we always held hands. We were always holding hands. We loved to just be with each other, right? And I'm holding hands while I'm walking there, and I'm reliving it, right? Got to the corner and made the turn. And as I made the turn, I go, this sucks. Because people get imprisoned by their pain. Right? You get imprisoned by your pain. But it's okay to be honest. It's okay to say things hurt. Because if I'm lying, 
You're going to think about a whack job. Right? But I really believe the best days of my life are ahead if you have to journey through what could make me into a prison. Right? I don't want to live in that prison. Same for you with your mom. That's how you got to look at this thing. Is you are not imprisoned. So, you have to change your mindset. Go to Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. Is this making sense to you guys tonight so far? How many need this besides me? It's probably me. I need it. Genesis 50, verse 20. In the uh, New American Standard, right? You go to that, Robert, you read it, and what you got? 50, verse 20? Yeah. 20, just, just 20, that's it? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. Um, 50 verse 20 it says, um, But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Okay. Now, who's saying that? You know who's saying that? Jesus. Joseph. Joseph. Mm -hmm. Joseph. The dude that got thrown in the pit, that had to battle all his humans, he got thrown in the pit based on his past. He didn't even do nothing wrong. <clears throat> People got jealous, threw him in the pit. See, I'm going to say something, and I, I really believe this. I just think down deep, people don't like others to do well. They don't. I agree. I just think there are some people in this world that don't want other people to do well. They want to see you fail. They would love to see you fail. They would love to say, I told you so, rather than, wow. That's true. So, Brett, go ahead and read it if you got it. Okay. It's almost the same. Yeah. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result to preserve many people alive. So, in your journey, what the enemy meant for evil God is making for good that makes people better. A guy called me uh, New Year's Eve day, the 31st. He said, I got to tell you something. I was praying for you, my wife. He said, the enemy did everything to destroy your faith <laughs> for three years. And you didn't lose faith. No. I didn't think about it. Actually, you, you got more fired up. I got stronger. You got stronger, more fired up than I've ever seen, ever seen before. But it didn't make sense, right? He says, you're battling with your wife. Your wife passes. You don't stop. And two weeks later, your mom goes into a Alzheimer's lockdown. And you still keep smiling. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I take my credit. Because if I didn't have the hand of God on me, that would have happened. I, I wouldn't be doing this. That would not have happened. So what I'm saying to you, I echo the words of Joseph. Say this one. What the enemy, what the enemy meant for evil, meant for evil, evil or, harm, or harm, God has made, God has made for my better. For my better. What you say about? All the employees that come in and out of your place. Are you kidding? No. It's making you better. All the different places you've been around in, all the different job things. What was meant for evil, God's making for good, for your better. See, when I think of the word betterment, James, what I think of that, or Debbie, or, or Robert, I think of betterment. I, I think of moving from one place to another place. And in order for me to get better, I have to make a choice. I believe this, and I said this in a leadership meeting, I want you to hear it. Your words chase you. I could say follow me, but that's not deep enough. But if I say your words chase you, they'll chase you down. I'm a loser. I failed. There's nothing wrong with acknowledging it, but don't live there. Don't put my address as failure. 
My address is restoration mode. Do you hear the difference? So in this, I'm shifting my thinking into a new mindset. So my mindset is, let's say, Ryan, uh, your business, you, you guys are in sales. Debbie, you're sort of in sales too, are you? Yeah. So as you're in sales, you could look at the worst year you had or the best year, or you could say, well, I hope I just have as good a year as the next year. That will chase you down that you might just have as good as you have. Or if you speak, my greatest year is ahead of me, what will chase you down? See, I, I'm speaking because everywhere I go, my best days are ahead. They're coming. I, I believe it. My best days are ahead. I can hardly wait. I want to see at the end of January what God's done for me. I don't mean like money and things like that. It might be, but I mean things that are solid. See, when I start speaking, this doesn't change the way I think. If I come up to you and go, oh, man, my back hurts, my neck hurts, my arms hurt, my legs hurt, what chases me all the way to bed? And you know what chases me when I get up? I'm still sore. <laughs> and you know what chases me all that day? I'm still sore. You know what chases me back to bed that night? I'm still sore. See, that's what happens when you speak words. What needs to change? If the mindset is, God, what was meant for evil, you actually made for good or my betterment. What changes in how you view things? Everything. Marriages don't always appear strong, but the core does. The core does. There's times there's disagreements in marriage. There's times there's disagreement in relationships. But it doesn't mean the core changes. Because out of the disagreements comes strength. Am I right? See, you don't have the disagreements. It's just all, 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 all. But see, what chases me is, if I believe my best days are ahead, what's God going to put in my path to make me better? What's God putting in your path to make you better? Let me just rock it a little bit. You might have to become weak to get strong. But you said, don't, don't speak those words. No. Out of your weakness, the Bible even says, when I am weak, I become strong. So if I'm going to confess this, strength is chasing me, what might come before strength? Weakness. Okay, now here's, here's an action point. I believe there's pillars that are the core of our faith. What pillar of promise do you hold on to? Just think for a minute. What pillar of promise do you hold on to? Going back to Genesis 15 and 20. With the enemy man for evil, God be forgiven. But what pillar of promise do you hold on to? Brett, tell me what it's like. What pillar of promise do you hold on to? Tell me. What do you hold on to? So you gotta have something, you gotta have an absolute, you gotta have something that's an absolute that you hold on to. That's a pillar, right? A pillar isn't what I tell you it is. An absolute is what you have. That's your pillar. Like if I, I tell you this is mine, I like that one. But if it's not in your core, it's not coming in. You see what I'm saying? So what do you mean by we don't learn like, for, like uh, <laughs> forgiveness or that could be? Yeah, like a pillar to be forgiveness. Like, uh, man, a pillar I hold on to is forgiveness. Make sense so far? What's another pillar? The things that I hold on to in my life, and they become pillars along the way, even in my own life. Mm -hmm. It's looking back on my life and the times I didn't understand what was happening, all of my failures. Mm -hmm. God 
is so faithful. So faithful. Mm -hmm. That's the word. Faithfulness. His word is his integrity. Wow. So I know that God's word will get me through the tough times, not because I feel good about it, not because I'm happy, or, or not because you like like the experience, but his word because he's proved it to me so many times over all these years. Yeah. Uh, I know he's he's faithful. So yes. That gives me through the tough times. Right. And I look I have gotten to a place where I look forward to now to see what is God gonna bring out of that tough time. Right. The time I was I was so miserable and I was so down, but now God is putting me in a, a different place, showing me new ways to live my life that affect other people in different ways than I ever had. So that, that's a huge pillar. Yeah. So your pillar I break down is is the word. And then another pillar is he's That's huge. What's another pillar? Stop it. I think uh, God's always been providing me with the resources and people I need. So provision. Yeah. Okay, provision. Excellent. Excellent. And provision is broad. Yeah, what do you think? What's a pillar you hang on to? I was gonna say yeah, yeah. So who he is, that's something that God is going in. Susan. <laughs> I just think of um, he's my strength. Strength. Okay, God is your strength. That's a great number. So he is my daily light. So he's the light. So he's your God. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, that's right. He has a plan for me, and it's not a bad plan. Wow. It's a good plan. God's plan for me is a good plan. Wow. It's good. You know how deep that is? That's a huge confession. God is for you. God is for you. That's a pillar. Not just when you do good. No. God is for you. Because he has the guilt nature. Man, yep, right? Man, yep. You have to earn his love. Right? How many know people like that? And that's they, they live their life burned out because they're trying to get approval. And it never ends. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. No. That's not how it works. Jules. Um, his acceptance of me. He, he knows exactly what he's doing with me. And he just accepts me for who I am. It doesn't matter what other people think. You know, one of my pillars is I really believe God's fingerprint is on me. I really believe it. Now, what I mean by that is this. It's DNA. DNA doesn't lie. DNA does not lie. It tells you who your daddy is. That's right. <clears throat> My DNA. You know, no, no two people have matching fingerprints. But God's fingerprint is on every one of us. And you think your DNA had nothing to do with God? Oh no, his fingerprint is on you. And when I think of that, I think I'm marked. So my brain becomes very creative when I start, start thinking. In, in the days of war, when they had sword fights, the English would wear an armor with an emblem on it. Go back to our first part. Our battle is not in the flesh. Our battle is in the spirit. So the armor that's on me, my armor in my crazy brain, has like a swoosh, not the Nike one, but with the blood. And that's on my own. 
because his blood is on me that covers me so my past is where under the blood and my future is under what the blood so i really believe until you take time to understand what your pillar is and not just say it <clears throat> don't just say it believe it believe it because if you believe it you'll live it so you live Ryan, that you're in your business that's your business you eat sleep and drink get up and when people are looking for your line of work you talk about it. you don't take your hat on and off you can do flooring you can do remodel you can do anything you got heavy equipment everywhere you go you want to talk about it. you talk about hair i don't <laughs> when you talk about hair, that's your line of work. Debbie, you talk about sales. In contract, similar concept. That's what it is. Julie, it seems all you do is talk about communications and marketing. You hear what I'm saying? It, it becomes all I want to do is talk about my love for God and the future that you can have, and I'm driven by it. So what have we learned so far? What's the first thing we learned? Second Corinthians 10, 3 and 5. Write that down. Make sure you wrote that down because it's not in your notes. Second Corinthians 10, 3 and 5. What was the second thing we learned? Second Corinthians 5, 19 to 20. And then also read the message translation. What was the next thing you learned? And what was the power of that? Before that, it said that God is in the middle of the good and bad days. Okay? The second part of that is bad days don't come with a calling card. Bad days show up. You don't have time to prepare. It hits. Then you go to Genesis 50, and then I ask you the question, what promise or what pillar of promise do you hang on to? This will help you move forward. This sounds so simple, but if you actually practice this every day, start my day as, God, I'm human. My prayer sometimes is, God, I don't even like being human. But I am, but I believe you can take my human weakness and make me strong. God, in my humanity, it says that when I come to you, you make me new. Right? God, in the middle of everything, how can you see good, the good that you're in and the bad that you're in the middle of that? And God, when I fall into the pit, in spite of all of those things, don't let me take residence there. Don't let me live there. Don't let me live there. But keep my attitude positive, knowing that what was meant for me, God made for me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What are you going to walk out here with? What are you going to attack that has attacked you? You just shifted the score, right? When I played hockey, we were going to a visiting rink. And, everything. and they would have the biggest players skate normally in the world. They may not play the game, but they'll have the biggest guys. And the biggest guys will look at you. They try to intimidate. What are the things that are walking by you to intimidate? What if someone actually knew my past? What if somebody actually knew what I did? What if somebody actually knew I did this? I got to stop this. I didn't know how to stop this. What if? It doesn't matter. It matters this. We need to shift into something that's greater. Because God has a great plan for you and I. But we just have to understand that my legacy is not tarnished by my past. 
but what was meant for defeat has made me into greatness. Not that I didn't walk around right, but the testimony of God's greatness is what lives in me. Doesn't that change the game? That's how you start your new year. Richie uh, preached last week about unforgettable regrettables. We all have those. Every one of us. But if you maintain this, this formula, how many, how many of us would see our past change? It would change. Because now you're not thinking about it. Now you're going through it with a different perspective. You know what I love about our church? Is we can read the same passage, but we all have a different perception of it, right? Because we don't make everybody wear the same 3D glasses in the movie to have to see the same thing. Because how you see it is different, but it takes us all to the same place, which is back to the cross. What time is it? Okay. Uh, let's pray. Any, any comments? Give me some feedback on tonight. Ron. One of the things I thought about going before us, he makes the crooked places straight, but the devil meant for bad, he means for good, but sometimes we think between turn, this has been my experience, yes, my experience. yes. yes. sometimes between a bad thing that happens and what he meant for good happens, there's a process there. And there's a huge process sometimes, and it doesn't happen overnight. So I think it's that period of time is where we really try to test the faith that we have to have. Is that all the pillars that we use? That's when all that stuff comes in handy. But when we look back on it, we always, always see that God is there. That's good. And and you know what? There's a key thought of that. Everything God does is in process. Mm -hmm. Everything was process. I have a um, this is probably back. I mean, from to that person uh, in, in verse one on James, um, you talk about how we go through things and stuff. But in James chapter one, um, in verse two, where he says, uh, um, "My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, because knowing." That the testing of your faith produces patience, but let the patience have its perfect work, that you that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And that's powerful. It's yeah. <laughs> everything's a process. Don't miss Sunday. Uh, I, I really feel this whole month. I have something rock solid for you that I really feel. God has put it in my spirit. Don't miss it this Sunday. It's going to help you propel into the greatest year you've ever had. I mean, I, I'm praying that way for you. I'm praying it, but God's given me scripture to help you get through it. And I think it's going to change how you think. I think a lot of our failure comes because the way we think and the way we talk. And I want to change it. Now, I can't make you change, but I can give you tools. I'll give you one story. I'm going to, I'm going to share this. On Sunday as well, but a different way in the process. Everything God does is process. How many have read the story of the miracle of feeding five thousand? Okay. What did what did he do? Did he did he say, okay, go past in and out, out? Go past Chick-fil-A out? No, what did he do? He said, Go get me, go collect, go is a verb. Go. He's given them an action. Go. Go, act, go, collect what they got. And they come back with, like, what was it? No, 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 Well, right, that was just the men. Yeah. Women and children. Women and children. Yeah. Oh, and Christians, they all had about ten kids. <laughs> <laughs> they lived in love. Yeah. You know. Susan, you smell. 
parasol. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> Lord Jesus, say Susan. <laughs> God help her. <laughs> Let me my process story. <laughs> so after he gave them the orders, he prayed. And he blessed it. The process you're in, present what you have, pray it, and bless it. That's a that's a learning point right there. Many of us forget to pray and bless it. What we got? Watch multiplication take place. Some people can't bless the small things because it's not big. But if we can't bless the small, it'll never get big. That's deep. Then they ate. And then he said, Oh, he didn't just celebrate the provision. He said, Now go back and collect what's not used. And then bring right back. Are you kidding? Let me get that. Go back and get it. And it doesn't say anywhere where they put it down. It doesn't, it doesn't say that uh Jim, who knows where that food went that they collected 12 baskets. <laughs> I'm too low. To <laughs> <laughs> like, I've been to a buffet <laughs> at Long John Silver's. Two fish and those little breads. <laughs> they don't work. <laughs> those leftovers. Here's your blessing. If you have financial problems, learn to get, pray over it, bless it, release it to them, and let them take it and use it. And you will find miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. Because he's the I, I got home. And uh, I got an online bank and had to call Craig and said, hey, I can't walk on it. Well, when did you use your online bank? Was it 10 months ago? I don't know, like 10 days ago. So I started talking to the, the gal in the call center and we're talking. And uh, I hang up. 20 minutes later, the phone rings. Fraud away. Uh, where are you? I don't know. Like, are you I'm in my bedroom. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, well, someone just ordered the following things. I want me. How about this one? Not me. Oh, five of these in a row. Not me. How about this one? Not me. Like, this is powerful. Some people that are with a normal bank, you have to wait until it's all proven. Okay? I'm not putting the bank down, so I'll get that. But I want you to get the analogy. You know what they said? Call the credit union. We've already blocked it. Your credit union will take care of that. Nothing came under my account. Not a dime. I did have to go in. So I didn't even have to go in. I just had to do it on the phone. Here's how cool it is. Where someone tried to take my future, it's already covered. And I didn't leave there thinking, well, how did they get it? I'm not going to waste my time on Jim. I turned it to a positive to think no harm, no foul, just in good deed. And if you can learn to accept the inconveniences, not as harm, you'll spin your life in the way. Your world is about to change, but you have to shift. And I gave you some keys on shifting today. And I'm telling you, your dead best days are ahead. Say it when you get up tomorrow, my best days are ahead. 
say it and believe it. My best days are ahead. When you go to bed tonight and it's cold and the sheets are cold, be thankful you got sheets. Be thankful you got blankets. Be thankful you got shelter. Because my best days are ahead. How about that? So okay, so Wednesday. This is going to help you. You are going to move into a new way of thinking of your legacy. Because that's what that is. So I just want to share something real quick. Yeah. Because um, like with this whole message tonight, everything is just confirmation. It just because God comes speaking into my heart. Like he keeps just telling me, child, be still, be still. Just be obedient, listen to my word, I'll take care of you. Wow. So I feel like so much peace and it's like so much confirmation. And I just feel like no matter what the weather is or where we go through, we just gotta continue to be in the word and be there no matter what, no excuses. Right. And for example, just today, because yesterday, I'm off Tuesdays, yeah. and yeah. after four o'clock, my mom calls me, Where are you? You gotta, you gotta come back over here. There's no one working, all the files left for the day. And I was like, what? There's no workers? And then Susan calls me, Sophie, do I close the shop because there's no silence? Or what do I do? I'm like, no, we've got to be responsible and be there until 7. So just did it for a few hours. And I'm like, God, please, so many emails go through. So many clients walk in. Yeah. Everything will be okay. So I spent a couple hours just, like, praying about it. I listened to some voicemails. And then, like, I called a few people. So just, like, within those two hours, and then I was thinking about some people that, like, I wanted to be there. I was like, God, like, if this is your will, just send me people that you want to have there with with uh, this business and, you know, everything like that. So just let it be for your will. So then I got a hold of this lady. She's a school instructor for 20 years. She loves people. I asked her to add me on Facebook. So when I added her, I looked through her Facebook. And she's all about God, faith, love, hope, people. And she had just closed down her business in Riverside. So she's willing to come out here. I'm meeting her tomorrow. And then today I met a girl on Sunday at a nail shop. And then she came in and she was like, oh, you know, I just wanted to come in. But the, like, I don't know if I can come in because the weather is, is kind of raining. I go, well, it's, it's fine. Just I would appreciate it if you just kept your word because your word means everything to me. So if you can't make it for whatever reason, like I understand. But if you say you're going to be here, like just, just be here. So then I went to the restroom and I came back. She was like right there. And I was like, oh, I didn't expect you. She's like, well, you know what? You're right. You said, you know, when I say something, I got to keep my word, so I'm here. So then she's here. She's checking out the place. And then, like, you know, she's just talking about, like, I just don't want any drama. I just want to be around positivity and good energy. And it feels good. And she was excited. And she's like, I'm just looking for growth and opportunity. So, you know, like, I just want to, like, let her know that we're, like, family here and be right. that light. And, yeah. you know, like, I'm going to have her come here and meet all this one day. So nice, I'm looking forward to that. And then like this other man came in today and it was a man that Susan had met, remember? So he was telling me, he goes, you know what? I've looked at different places and I've checked out six salons in Upland, but God keeps sending me here. So this is where God wants me to be. And I don't know why, but I keep coming back here. So when can I start? I'm like, tomorrow. So he's going to start with this tomorrow. And he has his own clients. And he has his own clients. See, now what you do, is you pray and bless it. You ask. Now I'm going to give you an action point. This is how we do it. We could we could talk about that, and that's powerful because you, you you overcome by the word of your testimony, right? Now let's take it a step further. So God, I thank you for the provision of the workers, and now take it and bless it. Take it and bless it, because when you say bless. You're releasing. So where you need to bring in 12,000, 50,000, 100,000, I'm blessing the 10,000 that becomes 100,000. I bless the 100,000 that becomes a million. I bless the million that becomes 10 million. I bless the 10 million that becomes 100 million. You're thinking, well, that's crazy numbers. See, so, and this is what I'm praying for you. Are okay, you ready for this? I'm praying for people to own a house when you don't think you can. I'm praying for people to own a rental property when you don't think you can. I'm praying for people's finances to turn around. I'm praying for people's businesses to change. You're not too old to buy a house and you're not too young to buy a house. God wants to position us. Why be a debtor to someone else that you're renting from and you can own? 
you read it for a month's play. Yeah. <laughs> and if you need a haircut while you're buying it, call Sophie. If you need help for me, call James. If you need help marketing, call Julie. And if you need, yeah, call Javier for that. And if you need to learn MMA, call Kayla. Next martial arts, baby, she's going to be my bodyguard on Sunday. <laughs> You learned, I, I, I sound arrogant, but I'm not. You learned a good lesson tonight. This could change how you live. But who has the choice? You know what I get mad at? I get mad at the very first scripture. Dang, I'm human. <laughs> oh, here. So I'd like to say something because that is like we can smile with me the whole time. So the beginning of the year, the end of the last year, was pretty rough, my altering. And, uh, Listening to Joel or something, but I heard a little bit of words of, uh, and the number one thing I've said this whole year is what's meant for my heart will be turned around and be for my good. And at the beginning, it was because I was at that rock bottom. And, and I strongly believe that's actually once we start getting up, that's where our faith is the strongest because we don't know where to go. So we commit 100%. And so I would say that all the time, but at the beginning, it was because I was dying and hurting and from everywhere and every angle. And then life started changing and things started happening. And then as the year went by, you know, life was great, right? All these new changes, all these new adventures, all these new positive things. And then as the years went by, you know, you still go through these stuff. So now when I say it, when something happens, I, I truly say it like, just getting ready for what great things are going to come out. Because, yeah, yes, I'm still struggling. There's bad things or things that I don't understand happen. But when I say it all the time, I say, okay, it's meant for my heart. It's going to be for my good. All right. And it just keeps happening every time. It's, you know, I go through this thing and it faces and it's better than I could have ever expected. Um, that's it. Again, like everything you said was just like a fresh air. Like, okay, because I just lived it. That's awesome. That's awesome. If you could buy this, like I could sell it, but if you could actually get it, there's a key to this. We don't believe everything we hear. Right. I believe everything I say. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so remember what I said earlier? <laughs> remember what I said earlier? What chases you? Your words. What you say, you know what's chasing me? Better. Better's chasing me, James. I don't know what better is. Because what God does, we go tonight, give us strength, give us courage, and help us to see greatness. In Jesus' name. Everybody said it? Amen. Amen. Hey, Saturday morning, 8 o'clock, guys, men's breakfast, and Sunday, please don't miss it. Bring a friend. Bring a friend. This is going to change your world. Did you help us prepare tonight, great? God bless you.